Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Today I received issue 457 of White Dwarf magazine. This is exciting because issue 457 includes the long-awaited Men of Metal mission for Blackstone Fortress. So today we are going to take a look at that. Issue 457 is already available for pre-order and it will go to retail this weekend. As a subscriber, I have received it a few days earlier. And you can see that as a subscriber, I have got this full art cover, which uh, depicts here a couple of uh, unusual Space Marine lieutenants by the look of it um, in some rather unorthodox armor. <laughs> we, d we don't care about that. What we care about is this Men of Metal mission. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick spoiler-free introduction and then I will give you fair warning to leave the video if you don't want to see the specifics, but I will be going through the whole mission. And at this point, it probably goes without saying, but I will mention it anyway. This particular mission does require the Escalation and Ascension expansions. If you do not have both of those expansions, there's no point picking up this magazine for the extra Blackstone Fortress content. So as we already know, it's called Men of Metal. Daedalosis has decided to go into the Blackstone Fortress to try and figure out what the spindle drones are all about. The spindle drones are quite difficult to um, get any data on because when they are destroyed, they are immediately absorbed back into the Blackstone Fortress. But Daedalosis wants to grab himself a functioning or semi-functioning spindle drone to find out a little bit more about them. And in order to do that, he is bringing along UR025, who um, he's invited along to help, but he doesn't really trust. Similarly, UR025 does not trust Daedalosis. And that's pretty interesting because Blackstone Fortress has always had this thing where it tries to encourage people to backstab a little bit. There's all these challenges and events where it sort of feels like it's trying to encourage you to play the game in a slightly competitive format, whilst also working with each other when you need to. This is obviously a thematic thing because all of the characters in Blackstone Fortress, they aren't necessarily the type of people or entities that would normally team together. They are forming uneasy alliances in order to achieve their goals. And they wanted to encourage players, I think, to play in that style but it doesn't really make a lot of sense in most situations you want to play cooperatively there's no real benefit in backstabbing each other or trying to get one over on the other players and it seems that this mission is trying to find mechanisms trying to find a mechanical way to reflect that uneasy alliance that sense that you want to work together, you need to work together. If you don't work together, you are going to die. But at the same time, you have your own agendas, you have your own goals, and you are not opposed to screwing over your allies if it can gain you some kind of advantage. And when I look through the mission in detail, you'll see what I mean about that. But it is interesting that they have attempted to introduce a kind of mechanical way to reflect that more emotional level that the characters have. The other things to note about this particular mission, it is a prequel to the events of Ascension. If you have played through Ascension or you have watched my full spoiler video on Ascension, which is the final Blackstone Fortress expansion, you will know why this is a prequel. It wouldn't make sense to come later on. So this is something that you can slot in just before you take on the final expansion. But it is only for two characters. Only Daedalosis and UR025 go on this mission. It's like a little spotlight mission that perhaps shines a light on characters that might not have had so much attention throughout the game, which is quite interesting. What is also interesting is that this uh, particular mission is quite similar to the Amble one, which is available in the Blackstone Fortress Annual. I have said on previous occasions that that particular mission is an absolute highlight of Blackstone Fortress. It's really good. Rather than having exploration cards and access tunnels to particular strongholds, it instead gave you a fixed series of combats and challenges that you had to work through in sequence. And in so doing that, it created a much stronger narrative and 
much more interesting situations within the challenges and within the combats that you had to resolve. And this particular mission in issue 457 does the same thing. There are five distinct stages. You have a combat, then a challenge, then a combat, then a challenge, and then a final combat. So if you found that Amble mission interesting, if you like that particular format, this particular mission is doing the same sort of thing. And I guess the final thing that I should point out before I start going into specifics is that there is no reward for completing this mission. This isn't the first time that Games Workshop have done this. This isn't the first time they've introduced a mission that has no benefit for completing it. But it is still quite an unusual thing. It's one of those missions that you either take it on just because you like the narrative idea of it, you like the sense of uh, exploring a little bit more about these particular characters because you want to take on the challenge, or it may be something if you are playing with an enemy player, if you have an adversary who is acting as an opponent and also a games master, a dungeon master of sorts, Perhaps it's a mission that your games master could throw at you when you least expect it, forcing you to take two characters and go off on a completely separate lone mission with them. Another way you could use it is if you can only get one of your mates around, you can each grab a character, you can play through a cool little side quest, and because there are no particular rewards, there's no benefits as such, it doesn't affect your main campaign and when your other players come back they aren't going to feel like they've missed out on some goodies or you managed to unlock some cool stuff that they didn't get to see. So I think there's lots of ways you could slot this into your gaming session. For me as a predominantly solo player I think it's just something that I would take on just to have extra missions to play through because sometimes it's not about the destination it's all about the journey. But speaking of journeys Let's take a look at the mission in a little bit more detail. Obviously, we are going into spoiler territory here, so if you don't want to see specific combat layouts, if you don't want to see a complete breakdown of how the challenges operate, I would suggest this is the point where you leave the video. Thank you very much for watching to this point, and hopefully I will see you all again in the next video. For anybody who doesn't mind spoilers, for anybody who wants to know a little bit more before they decide whether to buy this magazine, stick with me. We're going in. As I mentioned in my preamble ramble, this is a mission in five stages and it starts with a combat. And there's this situation where they have tried to encourage you to balance helping your ally with doing your own thing. So we have a circular route here. And there are four groups of hostiles, each comprising one spindle drone. And the spindle drones will be starting at threat level three because they are on high alert. Furthermore, whenever you make a reinforcement roll for this combat, you treat the roll as a one. So you are going to be constantly facing new reinforcements every single turn. And the aim of this mission is pretty simple. You need to both inspire and then find a maglev and get out. But what they have done is they have introduced mechanisms that make it difficult to uh, help the other player while still inspiring. For example, UR025 has the pretense of obedience where he is trying to act like he is um, helping out and not after his own gains. So he has this special rule in play that says when he would inspire, if he has line of sight to Daedalosis, he does not inspire. So you're going to want those situations where you can get out of line of sight, perhaps splitting the party and going down the different routes here so that he can actually inspire. However, Daedalosis also has a special rule for this mission called warning subroutines. And it says that when Daedalosis would gain an inspiration point, if he does not have line of sight to UR025, he does not gain that inspiration. So you have this sort of tug of war, this balance of trying to stay in line of sight with each other, but also being out of line of sight at the right times. And that's quite interesting. It's very mechanical and quite gamey. Even if you're controlling both characters yourself, you're still going to have to play the characters in a slightly cagey, slightly um, selfish, but also slightly cooperative way. 
The second stage is a challenge and it's quite unusual because it is a dexterity based challenge. The idea is that Daedalosis has managed to get a broken spindle drone and it's being absorbed back into the Blackstone Fortress and he has a limited amount of time in order to dissect the creature and try and find out a little bit more about it. And the purpose here is to make the subsequent combat round either more or less difficult, representing the information you have managed to glean from the wreckage. So in order to do this, you have a very peculiar setup. You have to take, I'm gonna hold this up a little close to the camera so you can see. You have to take a whole bunch of Grievous Wound tokens and you have to create this setup here with one regular wound token at the end. And then you have to put a dice at the starting point. And then you pick one player or yourself if you're playing solo. And you have to use the line of sight stick and you have to push the dice. And you have to push the dice all the way to the wound token at the end. If you knock any of the red tokens, if any of the red tokens move for any reason, you have failed. And in the next combat, all of the spindle drones will be on high alert and they will be replaced with awakened spindle drones, which come in the Ascension expansion. If, however, you get your token, your dice, all the way to that final wound token, then you won't be suffering that penalty in the next round. So yeah, that's a little bit different, a little bit weird. I kind of like the concept. I don't like the idea of spending a bunch of time trying to set up these tokens in that particular formation. That's a little bit fiddly. And um, yeah, it's unusual. It's nice to see something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on the idea but um, you have to give them credit for trying to find a way to thematically represent that sense of under pressure trying to root around inside um, a disassembling piece of machinery to try and find out what makes it tick. Regardless of the outcome you will go on to stage three which is a new combat and in this particular combat you will be facing spindle drones or awakened spindle drones if you are were not successful in stage two and also one of our big new guardian drones who will be standing on sentry until a particular point in the mission when he will suddenly activate and again we have another interesting map for this particular combat which is reflecting that sense of working together but also needing to split up sometimes. If we have a look at the map a little bit closer, we can see that there are discovery markers and then there are matching obstructions. So we have a discovery marker one here and an obstruction one here, and then a discovery marker two here and an obstruction two here, and then a three and a three. And then we have four, which will remove those two blockages there. And I think you can probably see where this particular mission is going. When you get to discovery marker one and you remove it from play, obstruction one will also vanish. These discovery markers are representing control panels which activate these blockages. So you have to split up. Once you've activated discovery marker four, our guardian sentry, our big lad at the top, will activate and everybody's day gets a little bit worse. And of course, Completing the mission involves getting out. And it's worth noting that all of the combats in this mission have special rules for the reinforcements. For this second combat, you will have your reinforcement rolls. So you aren't guaranteed to constantly have spindle drones um, appearing on the board, but there is a much greater chance. If you make it through that combat, you have the second challenge. And again, it's a challenge which represents that balance between cooperation and selfishness because a whole host of the spindle drones will appear and chase you and Daedalosis is running and UR025 has an opportunity to provide covering fire. The way the challenge works is Daedalosis will make an agility test. If he succeeds, great. And if he makes three successful agility rolls, the challenge is completed. However, whenever he fails an agility roll, he will take one wound. At that point, 
UR025 has an opportunity to step in to help him. To do that, he makes a weapon action. If the weapon action succeeds, he shoots the spindle drone before it can grab Daedalosis, and Daedalosis does not take the wound. If UR025 fails his attack roll, he takes the wound instead and there's nothing he can do about that, he will take that wound. So you have this situation where you have to balance whether you want Daedalosis to take the wounds or whether you want UR025 to try and help him, but he may take the wounds. So there's something to think about there. And that challenge will continue until you have made three successful agility rolls. So there is a real chance there of picking up quite a lot of wounds if you roll badly. But if the explorers survive, they make it to the final combat where they have arrived at the source of this signal that they've been following and they find a spindle drone factory. Way, 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 way back when I first started covering Blackstone Fortress, one of my early complaints was that there weren't enough missions like this. I found a lot of the combats where you just use the combat cards and you set up these vanilla skirmishes um i found them not quite as compelling i liked to have scenarios where you had specific objectives and special things to do and one of the things i suggested was it'd be cool if you could find maybe a spindle drone factory or something where you had to switch off the the machines to stop them producing new spindle drones and that is exactly what you are doing in this combat because on this map, at the top, you have two portals, which are outlined in red, and these are drone extruders. While those drone extruders are operational, then your reinforcement rolls are always treated as a one, so you are going to get a constant stream of new spindle drones appearing on the board. But you can destroy the extruders, you can shut them down. When an explorer is adjacent to one of the extruders, you can make a special five plus action, and when you do that, you place a wound counter on the extruder. And when an extruder has four wounds, it's removed from the battlefield. So, yeah, it's an interesting thing you have to do. And it's something that eats actions for the turn. So it's going to take a little while to get through it. But it's nice to see a mission like this, uh, which kind of almost fulfills one of my early wishes for the game. And here we are right at the... Uh, the final curtain of Blackstone Fortress. We've had the final expansion. We probably aren't going to get anything else beyond this point. And one of the things, one of the little throwaway comments I made way back at the beginning is, is here in this mission. And that's kind of cool. I'm not in any way suggesting that a comment I made back in the midst of time has in any way swayed or influenced this particular mission. Just to be clear, I'm not that self-centered. But it's just like the Blackstone Fortress saying saying a fond farewell to me it's saying so long and thanks for all the fish it's kind of cool but anyway obviously to complete this mission you have to destroy the two extruders and then make it to a maglev and escape and that is it that is the end of your mission and as i mentioned in the preamble there is no reward for doing that except for a sense of accomplishment and a new story to tell around the campfire but that's it. That's your lot. I haven't played through the mission yet. I've only just received the magazine, so I can't say how it will play in practice. But it looks interesting. It's got some interesting concepts. I'm not sure about that dexterity challenge in stage two. But I like the idea. I like the concept. I like the fact they've made these attempts to balance cooperation and selfishness, finding a mechanical way to reflect that sense of an uneasy alliance. That's an interesting idea. And something which I don't think Blackstone Fortress ever really managed to capture throughout um, the core box or any of the expansions we've had. At this point, I would be surprised if we get any more White Dwarf missions. Um, we have reached the end of the Blackstone Fortress narrative, and as I mentioned before, this particular mission is a prequel of sorts. So unless they're going to occasionally drop in a prequel adventure, another little adventure that just takes two or three characters and throws them together in an interesting situation. I can't really see that happening. I think this will probably be it. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm not really expecting to see an annual at the end of the year either. It seems like something that perhaps Games Workshop wouldn't really be interested in investing in because 
why would they? The, the, the game's finished at this point. Um, I would love to be wrong. I would love to have an annual to round out the year. I think that would be a great way to send off Blackstone Fortress. And of course, as I have said many times before, I do believe we will be getting a new Warhammer Quest game, if not by the end of this year, certainly in the new year. And um, I am looking forward to seeing what that will be. But I feel at this point I have talked for far too long, certainly long enough. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. If you have really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye, everyone. Bye-bye.